Hello, and welcome back. As we've discussed in the previous lectures, RDD supports two types of operations, transformations and actions. In this lecture, we'll be talking about transformations. Transformations are operations on RDDs, which will return a new RDD. Keep in mind that transformations will return a new RDD instead of mutating the existing input RDD. The two most common transformations are filter and map. The filter transformation takes in a function and returns an RDD formed by selecting those elements which pass the filter function. The filter function can be used to remove some invalid rows to clean up the input RDD or just get a subset of the input RDD based on the filter function. The map transformation takes in a function and passes each element in the input RDD through the function, with the result of the function being the new value of each element in the resulting RDD. The map transformation is versatile that it can do a lot of things. For example, it can be used to make HTTP requests to each URL in our input RDD, or it can be used to calculate the square root of each number. It is worth noting that the return type of the map function is not necessarily the same as its input type. Take a look at the following example. We have an RDD string, and our map function was to parse the strings and return an integer, which is the length of the string. Our input RDD type would be a string RDD, and the resulting RDD would be an integer RDD. Now let's take a look at a real problem that we could solve using the Spark filter and map transformations. I'm back at our Spark tutorial project. The file we're going to analyze is some global airport data that lives in the airports.txt file under the in directory. This is a CSV format file. From left to right, each column presents the airport ID, name of the airport, main city served by the airport, country where the airport is located, IATA, FAA code, ICAO code, latitude, longitude, altitude, time zone, DST, time zone in Olson format. Open the airports in USA problem file under the RDD airports package. The task for us is to create a Spark program to read the airport data from the airports.txt file under the in directory. Find all the airports which are located in the United States and output the airport's name and the city's name to the airports in USA text file under the out directory. The sample output would like this. Let's see how we can solve this issue. Just open up the airports in USA solution file under the same package. First, we initialize the SparkConf object. SparkConf object specifies various Spark parameters for a Spark application. Here, we set the application name for our Spark application. This would show in the Spark Web UI. We will see Spark Web UI in a later lecture. Then, we set the master URL of the Spark cluster. In this example, we will be running Spark in local mode so we can specify loco in the master parameter. Loco tune means this Spark job will run two worker threads on two cores of the CPU on my local box. If we set it to loco star, it will be running locally on all the available cores. If we set just loco, it will run locally with only one thread. In this way, we have constructed our Spark Conf object and set the application name and master URL. Then, we can create a Spark context object by passing the Spark Conf object as a constructor parameter. As we have mentioned before, Spark context is the main entry point for Spark functionality. The Spark context represents the connection to a Spark cluster and can be used to create RDDs, accumulators, and broadcast variables on that cluster. Then, we call text file method on the Spark context object to load our input file as a string RDD. Each item in the string RDD represents a line in the input airport file. 
Next, we need to find out all the airports which are located in the United States. So here, we call the filter method on the string RDD. The filter method takes a function as an argument. The function takes a string as an argument, which represents each element in the RDD. This function returns a bool to decide whether this element should appear in the resulting RDD or not. So here, we split each line using a comma delimiter. Let's take a look at how is this comma delimiter being declared. Go to the Commons folder on our project and click on Utils. As you see, this comma delimiter is a regular expression which matches commas, but not commas within a double quotation. We can see there are some cities which have commas in their names, but the commas are being quoted. We shouldn't use those commas as the delimiter. We should only use commas which are outside of quotations as the delimiter to split our input lines. Let's go back to our solution file. To be able to use our UDOS class, we have to import it to our file. Since the commons module is in our root directory, we have to add the root directory to our current path to be able to import the commons module. We do this here. After splitting the line, we take the fourth split, which is the country of the airport, and return the airports of which country equals the United States. Two things we need to be aware of. First, the split method returns a list of the split result. The index starts from 0, so the index of 3 means taking the fourth split. Secondly, if you look at the input file, all the countries are double quoted, so we need to add the double quotation to the United States as well. Next, let's map the filtered airport line to the airport name and city name pair as required. Since Python does not allow us to write multi-line lambda functions, we have to move the logic to split the lines to another function. So again, we split the string using commas. Then take the second column, which is the name of the airport, and the third column, which is the city of the airport, and join them together with a comma. Return the join string to the map function. Lastly, we output the resulting RDD to the airports in US8 file in the output directory. Just run this application. To run this application, just use the spark submit command that we saw in the previous lectures. Open a terminal and type spark submit and then path to our file. After the computation is completed, let's go check out the out folder. We have an airport in USA file. Since we have specified our Spark application to run on two worker threads, the result of each worker will output to a separate file. So we have two output files. We can look at those two files. They are the expected airport name and city name pair. Now we have solved our first Spark test using filter and map transformation. Next, it's time for you to do a practice. Let's open the airports by latitude problem file. We will still be analyzing the same input airport data. We want to find out all the airports whose latitudes are larger than 40. And output the airport name and latitude pair to a file. It's your turn. Try to implement your solution in this file. Take your time to work on this task as this is your first Spark practice. If you get stuck, Take a look at our airport in USA solution file to see how we use filter and map function. We'll take a look at the solution for this task in the next lecture.